In the last presentations, we solved four problems on big O notation. Now, in this lecture, we will solve two more problems on big O notation. This is set number three on big O notation solved problems. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics. In this lecture, we will solve two problems on big O notation. So, let's proceed. The problem number one is, find the upper bound for fn equal to 2n cube minus 2n square. I want you to pause this video for a while and try to solve this problem on your own. I hope you're done. Let's solve this problem together. In the last presentation, I proposed the three-step method to solve these type of problems. The step number one is to find the dominant term first. The step number two is to assume some gn according to the dominant term. And step number three is to apply the big O definition. So now let's follow the same three-step method to solve this problem. So here is the solution. First, we need to find the dominant term. The dominant term in this expression is clearly 2n cube because 2n cube is greater than 2n square. Therefore, the dominant term is 2n cube. Now, what about the gn? Step number 2 is to assume some gn according to the dominant term. Now, let's assume that gn is equal to n cube as it can be the least upper bound for 2n cube. We can assume some constant c may be equal to 2 or greater than 2 and this might become the least upper bound for 2n cube and this entire expression. So, we are assuming that gn is equal to n cube. Now, let's apply step number 3. According to step number 3, we need to apply the big O definition. So, now let's apply the definition of big O notation. According to the definition of big O notation, fn is equal to big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n, where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. Let us assume some value of c. Let's say c is equal to 2. We are assuming c to be 2 because it is my intuition that 2n cube will surpass at some point 2n cube minus 2n square as we are subtracting 2n square from 2n cube in fn. So, is it true that fn is less than or equal to c dot gn or 2n cube minus 2n square is less than or equal to 2n cube? Let's find out. Let's draw the table for fn which is 2n cube minus 2n square and c dot gn which is 2n cube. Now let's plug in the values of n one by one. Let us assume that n is equal to 1. If n is equal to 1, then 2n cube minus 2n square will be equal to 0 because as n is 1, this becomes 2 minus 2 and 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. What about this expression? If we plug in the value of n which is equal to 1 here, we will get 2 into 1 which is equal to 2. We can observe that for n equal to 1, c dot gn is greater than fn. Now, let's take n equal to 2. If n is 2, this expression becomes 8 and this expression becomes 16. At this point also, we can observe that c dot gn is greater than fn. What if we take n equal to 3? This expression becomes 36 and this expression becomes 54. If we take n as 4, we will get 96 here and we will get 128 here. We can observe that if n is greater than or equal to 1, c dot gn becomes greater than fn. So clearly n naught is equal to 1. And this means that this expression is true. 
टू एन क्यूब माइनस टू एन स्क्वेयर इज इंडीड लेस देन और इक्वल टू टू एन क्यूब वेन एन नॉट इज इक्वल टू वन सो वी कैन से दैट टू एन क्यूब माइनस टू एन स्क्वेयर इज इक्वल टू बिग ओ ऑफ एन क्यूब फॉर सी इक्वल टू टू एंड एन नॉट इक्वल टू वन वी आर गेटिंग बिग ओ ऑफ एन क्यूब हेयर बिकॉज जी एन इज एन क्यूब सो एन क्यूब इज द अपर बाउंड ऑफ एफ एन सो विद दिस आई होप इट इज क्लियर हाउ टू सॉल्व दीज टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड एंड सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू सेज फाइंड द अपर बाउंड फॉर एफ एन इक्वल टू एन टू द पावर ऑफ फोर प्लस हंड्रेड एन स्क्वेयर प्लस थर्टी फाइव अगेन आई वॉन्ट यू टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑन योर ओन For this, please pause the video and try solving this problem. I hope you're done. Let's solve this problem using the same three-step method. Step number one is to find the dominant term in this expression. What do you think? What is the dominant term in this expression? Clearly, it is n to the power of four. because n to the power of 4 is greater than 100 n square and it is also greater than 35 therefore the dominant term in this expression is n to the power of 4 what about gn we know step number 2 is to assume some gn according to the dominant term let's say gn is equal to n to the power of 4 it is always a good idea to assume gn closer to the dominant term because we want to know the least upper bound of fn not only upper bound but least upper bound although in the question it is written find the upper bound so let us assume gn is equal to n to the power of 4 now let's apply the big o definition according to step number 3 we now need to apply the big o definition According to the definition of big O notation, f n is equal to big O of g n if and only if f n is less than or equal to c dot g n for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. Now, what is f n? f n is n to the power of four plus hundred n square plus thirty five. and we are assuming gn to be equal to n to the power of 4 if this is true then fn less than or equal to c dot gn must be true let us assume c is equal to 2 we are assuming c to be 2 and this means that we want to find out whether n to the power of 4 plus 100 n square plus 35 is less than or equal to 2n to the power of 4 or not is it true what do you think i want you to draw the table for fn and c dot gn i want you to plug in the values of n and identify the value n not and this means i want you to prove that 2n to the power of 4 is indeed greater than or equal to n to the power of 4 plus 100 n square plus 35 or in other words prove that n power 4 is the upper bound of fn so this will be your homework i hope with these the problems are clear and this means we are done with this presentation okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one